without further ado, we'll show you guys our modifications that we have done. We pretty much added a after cooler. Technical difficulties, a uh, red carpet unveiling, all right? So what we got going on here is this is how I mounted a after cooler done by myself. Pretty much what you have here is the line that goes directly from the compressor head. It goes out here. I put a union on here so that we can easily access it uh, or remove the line if we need to. And then the line comes out here, does the zigzag shape. And the reason for this is so that you'll have more time and the air, for the air to condense and not get so hot when it goes into the tank. When the hot air goes into the tank, what you have is a dew point. You reach a dew point in the thing and you pretty much get water in your tank. This is how you get water. And this is how you can um, not so much prevent water, but decrease the amount of water that comes inside of your tank by adding a after cooler. What I have seen a lot of people have done is add like a radiator that they find on the junkyard. I didn't have one of those laying around, so I just bought some copper pipe um, and I added some bend. This is half inch copper and I secured some of these spots on here with just some screw clamps. I think it's pretty sturdy. It's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. I didn't want to use rubber clamps because this this does get hot up to, you know, 200, 300 degrees, but hopefully on this side, it'll lower down to about, you know, 100 degrees or so. After that, we have a water separator that goes right here, and then it goes right back up, and then it goes right into the tank, which you can see right there, okay? And that's our after cooler. Alrighty, guys, so, we're gonna show you this Ingersoll Rand compressor. This is uh, what most people have. This is a single stage, and I have a two stage on that side. What we're doing on this one is adding after cooler. We already did that to that one. We're gonna show you um, step by step what we're gonna do. So this is the main line coming from out the compressor head and going straight into the tank. What we wanna do is pretty much add some line from there and pretty much wrap around here on the outside like a coil and then ultimately once we ran it come back out through here up and tie back into here so this line you will find in a really hard time trying to find these fittings that adapt to this so what we're going to wind up doing is cutting off this line right at this bend so it can come out straight and we can start our coil and then we'll probably cut it off here and start off here to go out to this side. And we're just gonna solder on there to uh, start that pipe. That is half inch copper. So in case you're wondering, that is a half inch copper line. And we're gonna, like I said, add the coil. Uh, we're walk to this compressor and show you how we did it. We uh, added a little compression fitting on there. That way you can remove this. And then it comes out to the side. Goes down and around and around and around and around. And then we added a little dryer here. And goes up through there and into the main line. So it's pretty much exactly what we're gonna wind up doing, all right? <laughs> all right so we got our plumbing all lined up here and we have a our line coming in of air it drops down this is going to be like the storage for the water this will be shut off and water will accumulate in here and then we can just let it off here i should probably get a longer piece here so that you know water doesn't come close to this electrical and then we got a little pressure gauge. I should have gotten something um, with more increments so I can read when I'm only doing um, 30 foot pounds for, um, sorry, 30 PSI for painting. 
Other than that, we have the regulator, then we have a water separator. We have on this side, half inch, three eighths, quarter and a quarter. And then we also have a uh, quarter line off of that one for this reel, all right? So that's the little setup there. Hey. All right guys, so the next thing I did here was pretty much add a half inch thread in piece, bent the copper and then add a shut off valve. This is gonna be the drip leg for the tank. And this will also be able to um, open the tank up for a much more convenient location than from you know crawling up on the floor and opening it. This is what the finished product is gonna look like. That one stuck out a little bit more than I wanted to, so I made this one a little bit shorter. All right. This is better than uh, you know having this little straighter valve at the end that um, you have to turn by hand. This is much better. Plumber certified with the ass cracking on. Okay, <laughs> so we got everything plumbed up. We got the two compressors. We got the two stage right here. We got a single stage. We got the after coolers on them. And we have the water separators uh, plumbed right there before the tank. So we'll eliminate water coming into the tanks on both of them. And we installed some convenient uh, drain legs on each one and pretty much what we have here is um we have a check valve on each one in case one of the compressors ever go the check valve over there in case one of the compressors ever um the electric unit ever winds up going off and air won't feed back into the tank air won't feed back into the tank into either or and you know potentially harm either unit so we have pretty much the plumbing going there some half inch lines we got a little manifold there and then we have another water separator over there it goes here and then it goes through the little manifold that we have built right and we got a drip leg about a foot long of drip leg on each end our trusty assistant plank in the corner <laughs> <laughs> beginning at the end and pretty much that's what we have here okay and we use three quarter line on the copper for this section and we had a little T there that uh, we'll add some lines later on in the future but for now this is what we have we have about let's see one two three four five six seven eight four eight four eight seconds. times eight times five is 45 right about 40, 40 feet 40 feet so we got 40 feet yeah guys I I'm bad with math so we got 40 feet of uh, continuous copper here not including you know these other lines here or whatnot so that's going to cool down the the air coming out of the tanks so that we'll prevent also more moisture or the dew point coming into the lines and maybe in the future i don't know how it'll work but we could possibly cut out a hole here and put a ac unit in this room to really cool it down, cool it down when, it hot. when it gets hot you know i'm um, in the nice hot summer days and we'll just show you this is the room it's like a small little utility room that we have here and yes it it, it does um one drawback that i have in consider like i said was putting uh the ac unit in this room just for the winter uh, not the winter but the summer months so that it doesn't get so hot but for now we just leave this door open and all right guys for this setup where we have two compressors dual compressors we have a single stage and a two stage compressor they all do end up feeding into that one yeah right the there. manifold at the connector, at the connector yeah becoming into one um these cut on this one cuts on at 125 and this one cuts on about uh about 150 or so it's good to know that just in case you know you want to make both of them not work you know you can probably do a, a little bit of a, of a valve but it wouldn't matter anyways i think because 
because we have a check valve, yeah, so the, yeah. the the air will never go back into the tank. So, yeah. um, but I mean, just something for you to know. Um, Spooner engines. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they got two spoon they engines. Got two spoon engines running at Race Wars. All okay? right, all right, guys. Anyways, that's the setup right now. We got a little infrared therm, therm um, infrared thermometer, whatever you want to call this, and we'll do some uh, testing on this. This is not completely accurate, but it's uh, gets you in the ballpark. Okay, so we're gonna turn we're gonna turn on the tanks for you guys so that these tanks can start to get running. And we can see how hot it is using our temperature gun um, from the starting point of the, the compressor head. Compressor heads, and then how cold it gets, or the difference in temperature inside the tank as it goes in through the pipes and, and through our little cooling system here. So we're gonna open them up. And then we're gonna turn them on. So we want to show you guys. These compressors being at zero right now, they did uh, just turn on just a while ago, but we emptied out the system entirely. And right now we're gonna go ahead and start them up and give you some readings after they reach uh, 150 or 175 um, PSI. And then we'll give you the measurements of the temperature reading. And once we do that, then we'll also do a um, air test on having a, um, air sander or something just going non-stop and showing the temperature readings at a constant um, use. All right? Going back here you can see that there is no water accumulating in the bowl while this has been running for about 8 minutes. So we have to plug in both of these machines to keep up with the demand of the air compressor since we have two compressors going. The head is broken but they're both running. So the head is broken on these, we zip tie them so they are running simultaneously. And you can see uh, with the two running, there's still no water in the, in the bowl. And we have no water on this tissue. We're wiping, so I'm pretty happy. Again, you can see we're wiping down the fittings and the back of the air tools to make sure that uh, there's any water, but there isn't. And that's proof of that. And right here, we're... Alright guys, so that was about approximately 10 minutes of running 
And that was the second water uh, filter that we have here. You can see it's, uh, you, I, I couldn't even call that an ounce. Like that's, it's really, really low, okay? Uh, unfortunately, these don't have the, the uh, things on them. But let's see if we can uh, open these up. They're a little hot right now. We'll open up these drain legs and see how much water is coming out of here. is literally right there I mean I'm pretty happy with the uh, setup and I hope uh, this video helps anybody in the same um, doing the same type of thing or th it'll help you in some some form of way now we're just gonna go ahead and recap all right we have what I did do here is I got a compression union off of here. So you can cut your old line that goes into there and just cut it in half and, and just bend it. These are bendable. Um, and I got a compression union there. And that has like a little ferrule or a little brass sleeve and everything. And I put that there. I did solder at first, but when I started um, looking at the temperature readings that were coming out, I was afraid that the solder um, coupling would come off when these things uh, started to get hot and they'll start you know the solids start uh, separating so I did a compression union and try to go as much as possible without having to solder at least up to right up to here because once you get up to here you're only at a hundred degrees and your solders um, won't be compromised or anything like that so that's a thing to say um, you guys already seen how the uh, shape goes and it goes right into the tank like I said um, th on this side, I would have done a compression fitting, but I did this um, like a regular, um, I forget what these are called, but one of those uh, unions so you could remove the pipe whenever, um, and that's going right into the tank, and same thing here, it's the same setup, and then we ran in, you know, the check valves on each tank, so one of the tanks don't... Um, potentially blow up the other tr uh, other one if it ever runs out of control or anything like that so we got the half inch line going across and going into this little manifold and then from there we have a water separator and goes into this line we have a foot drip leg there and a foot drip leg there I have seen people made drip legs on each one uh, I just thought that was just a little bit expensive um, running you know those valves on each each drop so I did one in the beginning and one at the end I think that's pretty good other than that um, that's the setup for for this and we'll show you what we have going on for the uh, the manifolds on each bay All right, so uh, this is the um, CPVC line coming down and we have a about a foot drip leg so water can accumulate in here and then we have a quarter and quarter and then um, half inch and then also this line goes to this reel and I made sure to we just welded this onto the beam as well as uh, that plate too whose car is that? uh Jeff's all right and over here we have um, this is where we're going to be doing the painting we got the drip leg coming down here. And you got another foot drip leg here with a regulator and a water separator. Now, you can see in here, like I said before, there literally was no water coming out of here. And we had those little um, things going, two of them simultaneously, for about, um, about eight minutes, about eight, ten minutes. And we welded that onto the beam and we have half inch three eighths and two quarters along with that which is another quarter so i'm pretty happy with the setup like i said 
I hope this video helps anybody. And don't forget, folks, at the end of the day, we're going to be trucking till we hit a million. Thank you for staying and watching. Enjoy this little clip of me pushing the smoke that was building up inside the coil that we were making for the after cooler. Smoke was building up once we were soldering the pipe, so uh, just decided to have a little fun there. Have a good day.